Okay, hey, hey, this is unscheduled, unscripted, live unboxing. And since there's nobody watching just yet, I'm going to give you guys just a few minutes to join us. I've got my knife. This is a package that just arrived from the audience. The FedEx guy just dropped it off, and we're going to see what we got. For the moment, I don't know. We could look at here some like lenses. That's all cute. Oh, and thank you very much. I have to thank all of my viewers because I just hit 10,000 subscribers about an hour ago. You guys are awesome. Oh, we got three viewers. Hey, for those of you joining us live, I just got a shipment in from FedEx. It's from Hong Kong. I have, no, I have maybe only 10% of a foggy idea of what it actually is. So I'm going to open it live here on TV. Hopefully, it'll be safe and sane and appropriate for the television audience. I recall there's a couple of folks in the Orient that were going to send me either some adapters, but I've got those. There's another lens coming out. I forget if it was for Leica or native for Sony E, but I'm going to open it live here on TV, and we're going to see together what it is because, you know, I get a kick out of this. I love it when I get a package. FedEx guy just rang the doorbell, and the dogs are barking. To be honest, I was recording a different video for you folks. I was doing a Sony A6600 review, but... <laughs> the dog started barking. The FedEx guy was here. I'm about to do a video on how to adapt every lens ever made to the Nikon Z camera system. But again, this one just showed up. Okay, we've got 16 guys here. Good enough. And if this is something appropriate, then I will leave it on the air. If you have any questions, for those of you just joining us, I'm going to unbox this live. If you have any questions, send them to me on the comments. As I can see your comments here live and see exactly an answer and respond in real time. Let's see. Oh, I don't even need my big scary American knife. I have... Got one of these little zip tie things. Let's see what we can see. I love you guys. Thank you so much for watching. YouTube makes it so much fun. I spent so many years working in television. Rarely was I on the talent. Rarely was I talent, either in radio or TV. Let's see. What do we got? A white box? No, we've got... Oh! Oh! Oh, 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 oh gosh. It's from our friends Laowa who are based in China. Oh, this box came from Hong Kong. God bless those in Hong Kong. Oh, yes. This is, hey, Mr. Butler, thank you. It's a 65 millimeter of 2.8 Dreamer macro, two times. Ah, this is a macro that focuses to two times. It's a 65 millimeter. Love you. Kevin, you are awesome. I don't even know what it mounts to. This is so much fun. You guys can share along here at home. 65 millimeter of 2.8, which is super useful. I don't even know what it's going to fit. Of course, I'll be doing a full review, but just to open her up, what have we got here? It's a beautiful box, guarantee card in Chinese. Got to love it. This is legitimate domestic Chinese product. Oh, S Chat, thank you. When the Chinese want to make something, I think that's great. When someone wants to offshore it to China just to save them money, I don't. Ooh, this is nice. This is all metal. This is very precise. These markings are, you know, they look like they're laser engraved. They're not very deeply engraved, but they're laser engraved. Oh, gosh, this is, a, this is like 1972, and I've been shooting since then. What does it do here? We go from infinity, okay, to the normal range. Ah, notice when you get closer than one meter or three feet. It then is giving you, no, those are still meters, and it's giving you reproduction ratio scale. It's weird, 0.25 to 1, they really mean 1 to 4. Is how we usually... In fact, it should be 0.25x, 0.5x, 0.75x, one to one. Well, hold on, that's clearly bigger than life size. Oh, ah, that was the key. Uh, it's coming back to me now. Macro 2x means this goes to twice life size. How crazy is that? Yeah, okay, two to one. Okay, that's why they do that. I would actually say this, you know, I would market 2x, 175x, 1x, 075x, but that's what it does. It makes it very clear that, because I know I, there have been problems between when you read a light meter. Remember those days? You see a four on the meter and you think it was a quarter second, but it really was four seconds the other way around. This is nice. Cap is plastic. Oh, this is a beautiful thing. Is that aspherical? It doesn't look aspherical. Yeah, you learn how to tell these things <laughs> with experience. What mount is this? Made in China. You know, that's classy. Made in China right on the mount. Again, a domestic Chinese company, so that's good. Made in China cap. It has... X mount, X mount, X mount to me means Fuji. That means X Pro 3, that means XT30. I definitely have an XT30. I'm gonna look, oh gosh, look at this diaphragm. Is that a beautiful thing? It looks like about nine blades, it's very round. How close is it? Focus, focus, it's really close. It's in, I love this, it's internal focusing. 
nothing moves externally is focused. Jose, thank you so much for making it here. I don't know how you guys find this. You know, I know how you find it. You find it through whatever, but since I'm not on the receiving end, it's hard for me to say. Okay, the key is it's not an automatic diaphragm. Hey, hey, Jose. It's not an automatic diaphragm, so you have to do this manually. This is not really an easy lens to shoot handheld. You'd probably want to put it on a tripod, get your system all locked in, especially if you're shooting a two times magnification. If you guys have ever tried that, it's a pain. First off, there's nothing ever in focus. There's no depth of field, and everything's moving around. Just the normal breathing, you'll lose focus. So yeah, put it all locked down on a tripod, and then you can set this. 65 millimeter of 2.8, Dreamer Macro. 52 millimeters, gotta love that. This focus runs really smoothly. This feels nice. Oh, it looks like it goes a little past infinity. And you know, I think that's it. I'm gonna put this away, but hey, I'm gonna stop and read your credits. Read your comments now. Also, what have we got here? This is nice plastic. This is, I don't know how to describe this plastic. It's different plastic than I'm usually used to getting. This is a metal hood. That is a nice thing. You don't get that in the offshore products people sent to China. Domestic Chinese product is nice. It's got a bayonet mount. I'm not sure which of this is. looks like this is not actually metal down at the end here. It looks like it's a hybrid plastic. But again, this isn't a formal review. This is just opening the box the FedEx guy just handed to me. I love it when the FedEx guy brings you stuff. This is nice. Although, to be honest, in actual use, if you're going to use this thing at close distances, I don't know yet, but you're probably going to be so close to the lens that you can't use the hood because you'll block the light. This is a beautiful thing. The only difficult thing is the studio shots, which I'm sure you guys see on my website that I do are so detailed that once I get my fingerprints on this, it takes me an hour to go clean off the fingerprints again. But hey, this is fun. YouTube is a blast, and I'm so stoked that I just hit 10,000 subscribers. I just gained about 1,000 subscribers in the past day or two. I guess some people are discovering my website, and uh, I'll probably be up to a million in a year or two. Who knows? Put that back. I wrapped this up. Why am I wrapping this up? You know, because I'm that kind of guy. I like to wrap things up nice. Then I'm going to look at your comments in just a moment here. And maybe I'll be on the air live here for three hours again. Who knows? But honestly, I really wanted to shoot my how to adapt any lens ever made to Nikon Z. So thank you, our friends at Laowa. You guys are awesome. And this will be a formal review real soon. Let's see. I'm going to look at my comments now. And let's see who's, he let's see who's here. Okay. Welcome to the live chat. Kevin, love you. Mate. 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 You know, it's hard because I don't have text. You are good and keep things simple. Thank you. Okay, I saw Jose. I'm looking at my comments here. For those of you who just joined us, I'm Ken Rockwell with KenRockwell.com. I'm doing a live unboxing, whatever the cat drug in. And in this case, it's a, a new ultra macro lens. Is it a new release? That's just it. It's that new. I sure hope it's not a secret, but no, it's, it's brand new. And so therefore, look forward to the review. And in fact, hopefully it's not supposed to be a secret, but uh, indeed it will be available for sale, I believe. That's why they sent it to me. Merry Christmas from Australia. I love you guys. No, it's not Christmas there yet, but getting really, really close. Okay, let me take this off the side. Do I say okay enough? Okay, I guess I do. Tell you what, would you guys like me to sit here and answer your questions for Christmas and Hanukkah shopping? Or do you think I should get back to doing some non-live studio videos here? Let's see, it's not seen any comments. If I get some questions, I will take live questions. And if I don't, I will thank you folks very much. And thank you very much for joining us. I've been reading your website since 2010. Thank you. Do I have any videos? Yes. Z50 photos and videos. If you look at my, uh, go to kenrockwell.tv, which brings you to my YouTube page. Whoever you guys get to my YouTube page, look at that. I think the featured video, one of the features video is my Nikon Z50 review, which is a full in-depth knockdown drag out review of the Z50, which my Z50 is, where is it? Oh, my Z50, yes. And not only do I have zoomed in 4K samples on my online YouTube review of the Z50, if you go to my website, kenrockwell.com, I have the original sample files that you can download and look at to your heart's content. And I've always thought it was funny that people would be all confused about, you know, picture quality. But considering I provide the original files, which is what the output of any digital camera is, you'd be all set. I'll be up to a million in a month. You know, considering I've been gaining, well, no, a thousand a day. No, it's going to take me a while. But we'll see. I, I think and I hope it's going to be a, uh, as they say, viral. You know, friend tells a friend who tells more friends and very quickly it gets out of hand. More hand shots. <laughs> Thank you. Over the years, I've helped me, you've helped me. Thank you, Donald, thank you very much. Me live, well, it's live. You know, I didn't really have anything prepared. I just figured, isn't it more fun when I get a box that I open it up live here on TV as opposed to just opening in the privacy of my own home? Ah, question from Kevin. 
With the A7R4 and the new high-res sensors, will we see digital zoom become common? No, I don't think we're going to see it any more common than we do now, and here's the reason why. There's no way to see more than 8 megapixels at once in this world. That's a 4K display. 4K has only 8 megapixels, and guess what? Very few of you are watching this on live 4K. I don't think that my system has a bandwidth. I'm not doing this in 4K. All the stuff I do in the studio on YouTube comes in real 4K, but it's nearly impossible to get YouTube display at 4K. At least on a Macintosh, you have to open the Chrome browser and then look at it with the Chrome browser and a HDMI connection from your Macintosh into your 4K monitor, and then you can see it. Uh, an Apple TV, I don't know if there's any way to get 4K YouTube. But yes, you can plug a 4K TV into an Apple TV 4K, but the YouTube app on that does not work at 4K, at least as I understand it. These things always improve. In any case, let's see, uh, digital zoom become common. I don't think so because... Even with 20 megapixels, you have more than enough pixels to digital zoom and do it really, really well. Didn't become popular. Now, 40, 50 megapixels, doesn't happen. How do I store it? You know, honestly, I go through gear pretty quickly. I really have very little gear actually here. It just moves on. I donate to the local animal shelter, sell it on eBay, or I have a dealer I use to move some of my, my more exotic stuff. So there's very little gear that I actually hold on to. Oh, Reddit. I had never even thought about that on Reddit. Thank you very much for whoever shared that on Reddit. If you guys found my Nikon video, it'd be helpful enough. Put it on Reddit so other people can find it. Thank you. Is it worth getting an old Nikon 50mm f1.8D? For a digital single-lens reflex camera, absolutely. Shot on a D750, D600. The 51.8D is just great. It's not worthwhile to do for the Z cameras because once you put it on the FTZ adapter, you lose autofocus. And once you've lost autofocus then I think you're in tweaker territory, so I would skip that. As chat, 1Z50 are seeing my review. Expect it tomorrow. Oh, man, Merry Christmas if you're celebrating. I love my Z50. I can't take my hands off this little thing. Do I have any Leica gear? No, absolutely not. I have absolutely no Leica gear whatsoever. Uh, the reason I have this Leica gear here is I'm just about to show you how to adapt it to the Nikon Z cameras. Here's a really awesome Leica lens, the... Uh, <laughs> the Leica 35 1.4, which is their current lens, is superb. And even this, my 135 2.8, to be honest, doesn't work very well on any current Leica camera because they lack the rangefinder precision. It worked okay on the M3, but now on the Nikon Z series, it works great. Although, to be honest, it's still manual focus and kind of clunky. But yes, I have a couple of Leica lenses here. Screw mount and regular mount. Let's look at our comments. This is fun. You guys may keep me here another three hours. Nerd45, am I worried about Nikon's long-term viability with all these bad financial results and cutbacks they've been announcing lately? Yes and no. As we all know, Nikon has been around for over 100 years. It's a company that survives. Look at the history of the world. Look at the world's oldest corporations. You'll notice most of them are in Japan. Some of these corporations have been around since medieval times. Continuous operation. Nikon knows what they're doing. Their management knows what it's doing. There's always little, you know, gains and, and falls. With what market should they be in? But Nikon is a corporation. You know, maybe they'll focus on spotting scopes. Maybe they'll focus on medical imaging, which is what they did a couple of years ago. Maybe the consumer photography isn't their thing. I don't think Nikon will ever go away. In terms of photography, who knows? If they came out with a camera like this, I'm very, very excited. To be honest, when the Z7 and Z6 and EOS R and EOS RP came out, my concern was that they were going to be crappy. My first thought was, if I pick it up and the autofocus just sits around and hunts and works poorly like the first Canon EOS M did, I was not going to be happy. But the fact that both full-frame Nikon and Canon and this new APS-C Nikon work so well, I'm very excited about that. If anything, I'd worry about Sony's long-term viability. They have crappy ergonomics. I've seen nothing done to address that. The cameras feel bad. The menu systems are obtuse, if I can say that. And now that Sony, excuse me, now that Canon and Nikon make awesome APS-C mirrorless cameras, uh, the question is, how long can Sony be around? Sony had a real good run for the past five years, and they are the world's largest selling full-frame camera, the A7 Mark III. But I'm not worried about long-term Nikon visibility or Nikon viability. The question is, what form will it take? Do you know that you can still buy, as last I checked, brand new Super 8mm film cartridges on Amazon? You can still buy <laughs> film. You can still buy black and white film. You can still buy newspapers. None of this stuff ever goes away. It just scales down and focuses on what it was always really good at, but they almost never completely go away. What goes away 
it was poorly run businesses. I remember there's a bicycle chain we all loved. Those of us who know bicycle, I think it was called Performance and Bike Nash Bar, which merged. And it was still a great, vibrant business, but at least as one of the employees said, it was a matter of some, uh, some fooling around at the top with finances that wasn't really proper, and that's what killed the company. It wasn't the fact that people didn't love their products. Bill, jackpot, thank you. Merry Christmas to you and Chef Jack. Merry Christmas and all of you celebrating Hanukkah as well. I know that's in the process now. Uh, something I have to realize is I came from New York or come from New York or everybody usually has a Christmas tree with a Star David on the top. Uh, <laughs> I'm not Jewish. However, so as all my Jewish friends pointed out, you know, he's a Hanukkah present and so we keep it at that. Jose, what do I think about the Fuji brand? I love the Fuji brand. I've been shooting the Fuji film since 1990. I love it above all the other films. I love my X100F. I love my little X-T30. Uh, I'm not that much of a fan of their interchangeable lens cameras because I find they're mostly people in portrait cameras. And I find some of the magic is lost when you go to the uh, interchangeable lens cameras. But the key is it's great for people. I find it looks good for nature landscape where I want high contrasts is what I think about the Fuji brand. I love the fact that the Fuji brand has real knobs and dials on it. Just like my, uh, you know, I still have these old cameras sitting around here from my history of Nikon lenses video. <laughs> they have real knobs and dials like a real camera. Although with the GFX100 uh, removing the dials, you know, I'm scratching my head going, what is it with these people? But yeah, Fuji. Fuji has been around forever like Nikon as a chemical line of film company. Donald asks, would I recommend an old full-frame DSLR or new APS-C? If an old full-frame one, I should say for those of us joining here, this is a live broadcast. I'm Ken Rockwell with KenRockwell.com and Ken Rockwell TV. Excuse me, KenRockwell.tv. Uh, take your questions live as comments, which I can see while I'm talking here. So, Don, you know, when it all comes to recommending cameras, people have been asking me this forever. It all comes down to what are you trying to do and who are you and how do you like to work? There's no such thing as the world's best camera. Although I all have my, we all have our opinions, certainly, but the question is best for what? The iPhone is usually the best camera because it's always there and better than any camera on the planet gets the picture you thought you wanted faster Every picture you take with the iPhone just looks like it's supposed to look. You don't have to fill it with it. But in any case, an old full-frame... Now, let's say, without qualifying Donald's request here, would I recommend an old full-frame DSLR or a new APS-C? You know, I don't know if you mean a new APS-C DSLR or not. But hey, uh, to qu answer your question, if I can guess, if the question really is format, is new, small format better technically than an old full-frame? No. It's really a question. It's like in car, no replacement for displacement. The question is... How many cubic inches or how many square millimeters of sensor do you have? How much light can it suck in? Technically, full frame will always be a little better. To be honest, everything has gotten so good today. The real difference is how much is in focus because for the same angle of view, you need a longer lens on full frame. And that lens shot at the same F number, like F8, will have less depth of field. So the question is, do you want less depth of field or more depth of field? I hope that answers Donald's question. He's certainly got more questions. And you know, Jose, kill you for getting a Leica. Well, Leica isn't about photography. Leica is bigger than photography. Leica has been obsolete for photography since about the 1960s. It's really a collector's item for men who like to collect jewels or Ferraris or whatever else it is. It, it's bigger than photography. And so that's more of a personal question. It's like your tastes in art. Okay, Bill wanted a Sumitar for a while. Sumitars are fun. That's what this little guy is. This, I forget. This is on my website, kenrockwell.com. Or I think uh, Leica... No, I have NikonIcon.com. But in any case, Sumatars are fun, but these are classic lenses. They give strange-looking results. It's not like today's lenses, which are essentially per perfect optically. Ah, Valdez APG. Would I make a video in the future? Again, he's asking me on a comment sent in, and I'm seeing comments live and responding to them live here. It's now about, uh, it's about 4.20 uh, here in New York City. Would I make a video in the future about how to make great photos, maybe on some scenic location showing landscape composition? Yes, that's something I really look forward to doing. It's something I've wanted to do for decades on my website. But to write down the intangibles of how to see and feel and, and synthesize a great image from the reality around you, something I just haven't been able to tackle. It's easy to write about cameras. It's very difficult to write about a broader subject. However, to do video, that's a definite thing I can do. And this video is coming to you off of my iPhone live, on batteries, over wireless. I could be out in Yosemite and do this live, and I just may do that next time. I didn't realize how easy it was to go live. Although, to be honest, while I'm shooting in Yosemite, I'm usually actually shooting versus fiddling around on, on this. But yes, Valdez, that is definitely on my list of things to do. Jose, you're welcome very much. Max Abrams, excuse me, Max Abrams. Max Abrams writes on the comments that he recently purchased a Nikon Z6 and was in need of my opinion for an affordable 
Dapple 70 to 200. I heard some of the older F mount 7200s aren't compatible. I wanted your advice. Excellent question. And that's the video I'm about to do, which is how to adapt every lens. Here's the deal 7200s, if it's AF S lens, it'll work great. If it is the original screw focused AF D lens that they still sell brand new to this day for about $1,300, it will not autofocus. Forget that. I'm going to do a video. There's a new product that came out called a Fringer adapter. Do I have that here in my hot little hands? I should, because I'm just going to show that today. My next video that I'm going to work on here in studio. Where'd it go? Pardon me. Oh, there it is. Hold on. Here's a trick. Can I do that? Look at that. One camera, the other camera. Okay, here's my Nikon Z7. Here's a new adapter that's not yet available. It'll be about a week until we can buy these. It's a Canon EF to Nikon Z adapter. It works with autofocus and image stabilization and everything. It works fantastically well. Autofocus is super fast. Stabilization works great. Although you also can use a stabilization in the camera. What I would do for a discount 80 to 200 on the Nikons is buy your Nikon Z6, which you already have, get this Fringer adapter, which I think is going to be about, well, I don't know what it's going to be. To be honest, the Fuji, the Canon to Fuji adapter is $350. This one's not for sale yet. And then get the superb Canon 80 to 200 f2.8L, which you can get used for not that much money. And again, if you go to kenrockwell.com, click my links for reviews for Canon lenses, look for the 80 to 200 2.8L, see what those go for. That does work great on this Nikon Z, and I've tried it. So that's definitely worth checking out. That's the sad thing. The other thing is, you know, you could also just go get a Canon, a Canon EUS RP for thousand dollars. Last I looked, because the Canon adapter works with all the Canon lenses. They don't have the problems that Nikon does. That only half of what Nikon has made is actually compatible. Okay, that's Max's question from uh, let's see, it was some four twenty one p.m. New York City time. Nikonian asks his personal best camera is D eight fifty. Absolutely. As I said before, the D850 is the culmination of over 50 or 60, actually the culmination of over 60 years of continuous development in single-lens reflex cameras from Nikon. It's highly recommended, and it is an awesome camera. John writes, glad I hit YouTube. Thanks for all your content. Thank you. You haven't seen anything yet. I've only had good content here for a few weeks. And the fact that there's so many people and watching these videos means I guess I'm going to have to do more. Jose says he'll keep his old M6 on the shelf. Oh, yeah. Plus gin, 420. Okay. Oh, I had a retracted message. I don't know that I can do that. Somebody else retracted. Okay, Nick says, what is my favorite current camera? Uh, it's my iPhone 11 Max Pro because it does so many things so easily and I, I am lazy. Other than that, favorite? You know, favorite current means, you know, the closer to today. This little Z50 is such a little winner. The pictures look so good. It's so much fun to shoot. The two lenses, 16 to 50, 50 to 250, pretty much do everything I need. It's funny, but the real question is, what's my favorite camera? Always depends on what I'm shooting. Different cameras for different things. My Canon EOS R is my favorite serious camera, which came out a few years ago, but it's still the world's highest resolution digital single lens reflex. It's part of the Canon system, which I prefer, and so I do that. Nerd45 asks, do I watch other YouTube photography channels? And if so, who do I like, dislike? To be honest, I don't have the time to watch YouTube. My kids watch it till they're blind every day. I'm out working. I don't have the time to sit around and watch YouTube. Who do I like? You know, I have gotten to meet in person. You know, everybody's super nice. Even Fro. Fro is a great guy if you get to meet him in person. And Tony and Chelsea Northrup, they are the nicest people ever. And I think that their channel is just so classy in how they do things. Um, the Snapchick folks are awesome. Everybody's awesome. Ted Forbes has his art of photography site. I wish I had enough time to watch Ted Forbes' art of photography. I think that's what his channel is called, art. Art of photography, he's got like, I don't know, a million subscribers. I think he's actually talking about how to take great pictures. And again, I've gotten to meet, or I should say, I've had the privilege of meeting all these folks in person. Ted is also a super, super, super nice guy. Um, I hope that answers your question. But honestly, I don't spend much time watching YouTube. I certainly don't go to it for information. Um, I usually use to see how my videos look and do quality control and audio levels and so forth. Um, that is a great question, Nerd45. Thank you very much for asking that. And you guys can always ask again. And again, this is Ken Rockwell live. Here it is now about 428, live here in New York City, answering your questions live, which you can send to me by the comment section. And I'll probably be here, I don't know, until my battery runs down or, or <laughs> I can't breathe anymore. What is the worst new pro camera on the market? Matt Livingston asks. I think that's an excellent question, but let me think. Here's the thing. The Japanese don't screw around. They make most of the cameras this day. I don't think there's anything coming from, you know, for consumer cameras, I don't think there's anything coming from the United States or South America or Canada or Africa or anywhere. 
Europe makes some things like Leicas. But in terms of pro cameras, it comes from Japan. Japan. Japanese are adamant about cameras, much like the French are crazy about food and wine and cheese. So there's no bad pro cameras. But there has to be one that's worst. I love the way that's asked. There has, what is the worst? Well, first off, a pro camera means there's really only a couple of pro cameras, a Nikon D5, Canon 1DX Mark II, uh, some of the Hasselblad, some of the, uh, I don't even know it's in medium format. I don't know if Leaf is still in business. Or Mamiya. Or Capture One. What do they call it? Like, who owns Capture One today? It is, oh, I forget. Those are pro cameras. Uh, Sony doesn't make any pro cameras for still use as far as I'm concerned. Sony makes consumer cameras only. They make pro video cameras, but you guys don't know what they are because they're a quarter of a million dollars a piece. So the worst new pro camera. Well, there really is no new one because the new ones from Nikon haven't been out yet. I would say the D5 is worse than the Canon 1DX Mark II. Simple. Just watch any pro American football game. <laughs> and look, 99% of the cameras are all white lens cannons. There's an occasional guy with a Sony A9, which really sticks out because there's only one of him. And there's a couple of Nikons, but I hope that answers your question. Donald, I rock very well. Thank you. I've been told that before. Pedro Silva asks me. How far? I'm okay. I'm three minutes behind there. As an owner of a lot of vintage Nikon glass like AFD, do you think he which is Pedro, should sell his gear and start changing to a mirrorless system. I'm not impressed by autofocus and adapted lenses to the Z-Sift. Yeah, Nikon totally dropped the ball. Is someone else going to make an adapter that works the way it should with a built-in autofocus motor? I think there may, but to be honest, Nikon was the king. They came out with their first SLR in 1959. It very quickly took over the pro market for 35-millimeter cameras because it had interchangeable lenses and it was very practical. It threw Nikon out into the woods. By the 1960s, Leica was obsolete and it has gone downhill ever since. However, in the 70s, Nikon started to get cheap. By the 80s, they didn't embrace autofocus, and unfortunately, they had some historical baggage, which I cover in my history of all Nikon lenses video, and they lost it to Canon. Uh, I wouldn't buy into the Z system. I would definitely buy into the Canon system. So do I think, if you're gonna change to a mirrorless system, don't change the Nikon Z system. This is funny, I covered this in my Nikon Z7 and Z6 review. The older you are and the more old school Nikon lenses you own, like manual focus, or autofocus, the less likely you should be to buy into the Nikon system. If you own all AFS and AIP lens, AFP lenses, consider it. But if you don't, all your old lenses aren't going to adapt well. And here's the thing, they'll adapt almost as well to shoot in the Canon system. So I would pass on Nikon if that was your question. Nikonian asks, 127, four minutes ago, would I get a bunch more visitors if you could announce your live chat in advance? You know, Nikonian, I wish I knew how to announce it in advance. Uh, something I'm going to play around with. I think when I went into the app on my phone in YouTube, hit the camera, hit the button to go live, and then schedule for your future date. When I did that, honestly, by the time I came up, when I said I'm going to go on at the hour, about half an hour beforehand, I didn't get any extra viewers. I'm also wondering that if I just gave it, gosh, if I gave it more than an hour, if I gave it a day's notice, I think I would get so deluged with visitors and questions that I would never get to get it to everybody. And I'd need to have somebody sit there and screen calls and know people wait in a hole for an hour. So I'd love to. If someone could tell me, and ideally send me an email, ken at kenrockwell.com, so I could actually see it, how do I schedule it? Or maybe that was the way to do it. And then what would I do? Would I have the video rolling and just put a card saying, you know, back in five minutes, back in three minutes? That's the scoop. As it is now, my computer is showing, my computer, my iPhone says that I have 87 people currently watching, which is awesome. And if we had gosh, we could have a thousand people. I wouldn't get all the comments. Okay, thank you, Nikonian. KD asks my thoughts on the Tokina 300 millimeter F4. I don't know. Uh, the 300 millimeter F4 I have? No, I have a 400 millimeter five. I don't know what lens you're talking about. Uh, I do respect Tokina. A lot of people don't realize Tokina is part of Hoya. Hoya is the world's largest manufacturer of optical glass and has been so for decades. Their glass is used in Nikon lenses and Canon lenses and in Leica lenses. Although those camera makers won't tell you that. Uh, Nikon used to advertise it. They made their own glass, but they still do, I'm sure. But uh, Tokina, those of the third-party makers, I have the most respect for them, but I don't know any of the 304. Greetings from Germany. Oh my gosh, Nikonian from Germany. I love Germany, but who doesn't love Germany, especially for Christmas time? In fact, I'm kind of sad. I didn't get to my favorite German grocery store and buy all the Pfeffernusse and all the other great stuff I love for that. Oh, Nikonian, I knew you said Germany. Uh oh, I'm getting behind here. 28, I'm like five minutes behind. The Macintosh computers and phones have beautiful wallpapers. Yes, says Valdez. Have I met any of the photographers who take the pictures for Apple? Honestly, I don't know who takes pictures for Apple. I know, was it William? Who did the, did you folks know the original 
wallpaper, or not wallpaper, the original desktop or screensaver, the original background image for the original iPad was this beautiful image of a lake with some star trails in it. It was beautiful. That was shot by a guy whose name I forget. He was a well-known artist. Of course, some people hated his work. That's what happens when you're a well-known artist. His work is actually shot on an 8x10 film camera and licensed by Apple for that use. But the thing is, since I don't know who the guys are who shoot that, I don't know that I would know who they are. I also suspect, I know when Microsoft bought one of the images they used for one of their uh, desktop backgrounds, the photographer was never told what the application was, never told how big the company was that was going to buy that image. They just had some third party approach them, try to buy this image, you know, at a most reasonable price. He had no idea it was going to go until one day he looked at the window system and says, oh, that was a license that I, that was the image I licensed to Microsoft. Dennis Beaton asks, and again, these questions that I'm answering are coming by the comments that I'm able to read here a little bit delayed because I'm Stuck up. Dennis asked me at 29 minutes past the hour. It's now 34 minutes past the hour. Also, I should apologize in advance. The last time I went live, we had some technical difficulties with the uh, Zorts me out and I went off the air for a little bit, but I came back. So if I disappear, I hopefully I'll be back. Is my 5DSR with UWA lens your favorite landscape camera? Well, I don't like acronyms if I don't understand them. I'm going to guess UWA is an acronym for ultra wide angle. Yes, my 5DSR with any lens. And there's only two lenses I need with my Canon 5DSR my 16 to 35 millimeter f4 isl and my 100 to 4 my 100 to 4 millimeters isl2 lens from canon is everything i need i don't need anything between 35 and 100 i usually throw in some other lenses like my 3514 or 518 or 512 but guess what when i'm out shooting in the field never use them or i'll bring my 24 to 70 28 but guess what almost never use it ramon omata asks, keep doing more YouTube videos, man. It's a pleasure to hear your comments. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Happy Hanukkah. Merry Christmas. All those great things. And we'll hopefully see you guys soon. Phase one. Thank you, Jose. Yes, phase one. I mean, if you want to spend as much as a brand new Mercedes or more, because Mercedes makes some cheap cars today, <laughs> you could buy a bag for phase one. Those are pro cameras. And I don't know them well. Plus, Jin says he thinks Mamiya was bought by phase one. I agree. I think they were. And combined with Leaf, I agree. The Mamiya Leaf make the digital backs of the phase. I agree. They all merged. Something I have not done yet is, you know, I had the Fuji ZFX100 with 100 megapixels. I forgot to compare it to my Canon 5 DSR. My thought was that Canon's economies of scale and overall know-how may trump the simple advantage of a larger sensor. Oh, but guess what? 33 by 44 millimeters in the Fuji GFX system is not what I call really medium format. It's fairly a small medium format, not much bigger. So I bet you my 5 DSR would outdo it. Life and death. Oh, cute. Okay, asks, are a number of Japanese camera makers jobbing out lenses to China and other places? Are those places making optical glass as well? You know, there could be. And although I have a problem with my companies, you know, if a Japanese or American company offshore something to China, I don't like that. And it comes a matter of just, well, it's personal things. It's more like the, the government of China. I don't, it's not American. I'm an American. I believe in freedom. Communism, communism is the most evil thing in the universe as far as I'm concerned. So I'm concerned about that. But honestly, as other people pointed out, the Chinese are apparently the world's best glass polishers. And when it comes to high-end military optics, they can polish a glass surface to better precision and smoother than any place else on Earth. Um, in terms of who's making glass, you know, I don't know. I don't work in that industry. And things are always getting sent around. I believe Nikon and Canon and those guys make things in their own factories. I believe they simply run off to China because they can get cheap labor. Uh, and honestly, from a business standpoint, if you can get cheaper labor, then you can make a better product for the same price. It's just that I would just be buying everything made in America or Germany because that's my heritage. And if I can buy an American-made product, I will pay much more for an American-made product. The problem is cameras today, cameras today, there's not a lot of American-made cameras. In fact, they are be certainly the military and industrial things, but uh, not that. Anyway, I need to hurry up a little bit here because I'm getting a little behind. News in action. Why are Pentax doing so badly? It was so great in the past. Well, Pentax was great for making binoculars and uh, scopes, rifle scopes, and basic 35 millimeter cameras. I don't think they've ever made anything worthwhile in digital. So I think the only reason they survive is they were smart enough to keep the same lens mount. But uh, the last time I tried a Pentax camera, it was like technology. It was 15 years out of date. So I believe that's why they've been reading my site reviews for years. Thank you. Nothing respect for my outlook and what matters. Thank to see, like, see me on YouTube. I love you guys. Thanks for watching. Hello to everybody from Greece. Love Greece. I haven't been there, but we certainly have Greece Greek relatives. Danny Jones says, be reading my site since 2004. Yes, I'm new. Thank you. 
Okay, Dubra Dialoa. I'm sure I'm getting that wrong. Also a Sony shooter, he was considering the real-world use recommendation on the Sigma 105 Art. He's on headshots with a Canon 135 II for years adapted, but looking for native mount. Native mount. Sigma 105? Native mount for what? If you're a Sony shooter, I would say stick with the Sony lenses. The problem with Sigma lenses is, although they have great optics, I do not trust and talk to your repairman. My repairman says that the insides are junk. And the sad thing was, even if they weren't junk, seven years from now, if you go to repair a broken Sigma lens that you might have paid $3,000 for, you probably won't be able to get parts. And then you have to throw it away. And he said, it's very sad when he sells somebody who brings in like a $2,000 Sigma lens that can't be repaired after eight years and has to be thrown away, that's sad. As opposed to if they'd bought the real thing, like Canon or Nikon or Sony lens. Sony makes fantastic lenses. The 135 f1.4 that Sony makes is superb. Experiences show me that the poor man always pays twice. I know, because I've done this when I was a little kid. I'd buy the cheap lens. It never was really what I wanted for one reason or not. I always went up buying what I really wanted, which meant I just paid twice. So if you're shooting Sony, I would say, by all means, skip the Sigmas, and just get the Sony 135 f1.4, whatever the big fixed focus lens is, you're going to love it. It is, as people like to point out, uh, arguably the world's sharpest lens and good stuff. Jose, he's got about to drive, got to go. Hey, Jose, thank you. I love you guys. I love you guys for looking at my stuff. Okay, here's a new question. How far behind am I? I'm five minutes behind. Don't eat some tam. I don't know what that means. You guys are going to send joke things here just to make you say them on the air. God bless you guys. Remember when I was in radio? We used to do things. We'd talk back to the guy who was on the air and just to try to make him laugh by pushing the button and doing talk back into the headphones. What else are they going to say? For those of you who have just joined us on this live broadcast here from New York City, it's now 4.40 p.m. I'm reading and responding to your comments live that you can post to me, and I'm now running about five minutes behind, and I'm going to keep doing this until I get tired, I guess. One other thing I was going to do is I was going to do a video. I just shot a studio video of the A6600 Sony, which I'll have to edit, look for that in a couple of days. I'm still trying to get The reason I have all these crazy lenses you know, here's a Nikon rangefinder lens. All this crazy stuff sitting here on my desk as I'm trying to do video about how to adapt any, every known lens to Nikon Z system, which is why I have them all assembled. Okay, let's see if I go. Okay, let's see. Where I got to go back here. I'm doing my, I need to hurry up here. About to drive. Awesome to meet you here. Eat. Okay, got so many cameras. Recommended Nikon FE, wonderful camera. Mia, got me in film photography. Thank you for all the great advice. Philip, thank you for watching. Am I done with video cameras? Uh, John Gaspar, I'm not sure what you mean by am I done with video cameras. Uh, Kios, Lebro, oh my gosh. Lebro is actually a Hong Kong company, and for many people, Hong Kong isn't China. Ah, well, I believe in freedom, so I don't think Hong Kong is any part of China. And God bless the people in Hong Kong. I've heard people say that, well, I would say that gets political, but by all means, I believe the people in Hong Kong love freedom. And all the people who've moved from that part of the world over to America, uh, gosh, they love freedom. So if they're Hong Kong, that's even better. And I wonder now, if it says made in China, do they really mean made in Hong Kong? I don't know. But honestly, that's not my place to come in here. Bonjour à tous, depuis de France. Ah, merci bien, Mr. Fubuki Mori. Ah, okay. I love it. I love France. I have been to France. I love France. And I even speak a bit of French, which I studied in school. Don't eat some, says, which would be a good budget upgrade for my Nikon D7000? D7500, D750, or Z50. They are all in the same price range. I do landscape and portraits. Get many AFS and AFS lenses. Ah, uh, if you've got AFD lenses, skip the Z50 because those lenses won't work. Uh, be honest, I would say go Z50 and throw everything else out that you've got that's old and get these new little plastic lenses. These little plastic lenses, the quality of these and the autofocus performance and the image quality is superb, really. I would say don't look back. I love the old stuff, as you can see here. What have I got? Here's a lens from, you know, here's a lens from like I think 1936. But for practical purposes, I'd say go with the new stuff. Also, if, if you're budget-minded, as I have always been, I used always buy my stuff used until you people started making, you know, you guys blame me for making you buy new cameras. It's you people who are at fault because you people make me go buy the newest cameras so I can review them for you people. Personally, today, I stopped at my, Z, my Nikon D7100. I've never seen any reason to update from there. Even the, uh, the 77,000, I think the biggest difference is the in-finder numbers are green instead of white. So you don't need to buy anything new. Honestly, if you're budget-minded, I wouldn't go to the 7500, which doesn't even couple to the manual focus lenses anymore properly. I'd buy a used older model. However, the, Z, the D750, that, if you have full-frame lenses, 
go D750 because it sells now for a bargain. I think it's down to not much more than $1,000. It's a first quality, first rate, full frame camera. So I'd say go D750. Let me try to move along here. Hello from Denmark. I love Denmark, although I'm sure it's dark over there now. I say I love my Danish furniture, my Bang & Olsen gear. Hola de Serie Madrid, España. Gracias, Mario. He's still rocking D50-200, says uh, Chiritro. Mostly used it for landscape. Should he upgrade? Buy a mirrorless, will you see a difference? No, you will not see any difference. The D5200 has superb image quality. You will see absolutely no difference whatsoever. The camera makers want you to upgrade. Go to KenRockwell.com. Go to my search box for my Should You Upgrade article. And it basically says, well, ask yourself how much money you got. And is this something you're going to use every day, all day to make a living or just for fun? No, the pictures will be exactly the same. The more you know. Hello, Martin. Oh, good. You guys say hi to each other. Okay, 140. Oh, Sony Sigma recommendation. Thank you so much. I'm glad I could be helpful. You guys are socializing. I love it. I love this stuff. Ah, message retracted. Good. I love it. Let's see. Matt Livingston writes back at uh, 4.42 p.m. I'm get to, he always goes to my website when he wants to learn about cool glass. Thank you to adapt to his Sony mirrorless. Thank you very much. He's bought a ton of Nikki stuff. Thanks to you. Thanks for all you do. Thank you for reading. Thank everyone for reading. Nick Donnelly asks, he's interested in how come I haven't seen me review a Lumix camera. Simple. I don't have the t time. Honestly, as a fine art photographer, I would really only be shooting 4x5 now if it wasn't for you people asking me to review digital and to do this and to do that. The first reason I bought a digital Nikon was it made it easier to just play with lenses instead of having to go to the lab three times to see what the shot looked like. So to be honest, Lumix cameras, I just haven't had the time to review the Lumix cameras. I come from the pro side of things. And the Lumix still cameras have really just been consumers. So that's, I'm, I'll even say, it almost sounds like I'm trying to be mean. I'm not trying to be mean. It's just simply a matter of time. I'm one guy. I have no one working for me. This YouTube channel is done entirely by me. And now I'm trying to do my written reviews and then edit my, my other reviews. I don't have a guy who's working for me. There's nobody else shooting these videos, which is why instead of seeing a boring talking head, you actually see the cameras. Oh, Matt says Nightcore. I thought so. Love my videos. Greetings from Belgium. Love Belgium. Love your guys' stuff, especially Christmas time here. Gino Photo says, What's my opinion? IBIS plus IS conjunction next being for Canon? I don't think so. I prefer in-lens stabilization because technically I think it works better, especially for wide-angle lenses because while the sensors can be stabilized with an image shift or, excuse me, sensor shift technology, think about the corners. You know how things get sucked out in magnification in the corners of an ultra-wide-angle lens? Well, if you just try to shift the sensor, it doesn't work the mathematics properly. You really need to shift it in the lens to keep the corners sharp with image stabilization. Okay, thanks for my review. He bought his Contax G2 and enjoying it, enjoying it since then. Yes, the Contax G2 is one of those cameras that those of us who still shoot 35 millimeters still shoot. All the crappy cameras have long since been forgotten, but the cameras that survive are the very best. The Leicas and the Contax love my G2. The G2 is so great, it just feels good going off, even if you're not shooting it. Just to hear it fire is wonderful. Nick says he's shooting with a 750 and a 600, impressed by every day how well the images hold up. Yes, in fact, even the old cameras. My original Nikon D3, I still shoot it just about daily. It looks the same as the new cameras. That's right, I just said that. My 12-year-old camera has the same general picture look. Also in Canon, my original Canon 5D, I still own it. It still makes great looking pictures. The reason I shoot my 5 DSR is not for the pixel resolution. It's simply because the ergonomics are better. The 5D has an awful LCD screen. Crummy ergonomics with the picture uh, excuse me, the power switch putting in the wrong place. Hello from Australia. That's Ben Weir. The best thing about me making video is hearing me say all of your hilarious quips out loud that I've read on your page for years. Thank you. Poor men pays twice. Ooh, that truth hurts. Now do I want to buy it by the missus. You know, I have a page called Your Wife Wants You to Buy That New Expensive Camera. And it comes down to, if you can somehow, this is a secret. I don't think we have any women here, so I guess it's safe. It's kind of like a men's club. Or at least YouTube's whatever tells you about 97% but three, three 3% women. So, okay, there's a couple of women watching here. But essentially, if you can tell her that you're going to use this to take better pictures of her kids, your grandkids, whoever, you know, wherever kids and family involved, if you can make better pictures and you need this new, like, 600 millimeter F4 to photograph the kids on their surfing routine, that's how you get the women to approve you buying your camera. Thank you. Uh, okay. Uh, hello from Iraq. Oh, my gosh, this is great. The internet goes everywhere. Always go to your website. You guys are awesome. You know, I don't think I get a lot of readership from my rack, and I'm not sure why that is. I think it just might be the difficulty of, of crossing borders with the internet. Thank you so much for reading. And again, photography is the universal language. It's the same everywhere. I have another question here. Do I like landscape photos taken with super telephoto lenses? Yes. 
Have I thought about experimenting with the super zoom cameras to try out? No, I, I don't really have the super zoom cameras. What I like to shoot is my ultra tells is sunsets because it would be a boring sunset if you photograph, excuse me, if you just zoom in with your ultra tell on just the sun setting, it'll take even a boring sunset and make it explode. If you photograph the sun reflected, a, a setting sun reflected in a large office building in the glass, shoot it with a 600 millimeter lens and it'll just explode because the whole frame will now be filled up, filled up with the bright part. 6000 A6000 is great. Yes, it is. Let's see. John Gaspar asks, he needs a recommendation for a video camera or should I just get an iPhone for that? Yes. Any of the current iPhones, since about iPhone 6, make great videos. What really makes them stand out is the current ones. I'm not sure how far back this went. When they come out with image stabilization in the iPhone for video, it's astonishing. It's far better than any of these cameras can do for video. You can walk along, hold your camera out to hear my voice and my attitude. Thanks for sharing my opinions and other info I pass over the years. Also, you've got me rethinking about how I shoot lately. Well, hopefully that's a good thing. Um, Kevin, GSO1, thank you for sharing my knowledge. Your website is great. You guys are so awesome. You know, I don't even have any bad comments here. I'm not sure those guys are. Well, they're probably still out Christmas shopping. Merry Christmas, best wishes, very happy new year. And by the way, you know, if you're still Christmas shopping, a lot of guys, I don't know if they're starting to call it quits here in New York, but they're offering free overnight shipping. Adorama, B&H. Well, of course, Amazon oftentimes gives us overnight shipping. And uh, even Crutchfield, who's great for stereo stuff, but they now also carry cameras. You guys could still be doing your Christmas shopping, get stuff uh, showing up tomorrow uh, with free shipping. Use the banks for fun once in a while. Merry Christmas. Ah, thank you, Pepe. Jackalope. I love the Jackalope. Asks, should you go for D500 or Z50? Going from D5600. Easy question. I'm not sure about the price. I think the D500 is much more expensive. If you're photographing action sports, by all means, get the D500. If you're photographing nature and landscapes, don't move very quickly, get the D50. The reason why is the D50, you can see what you're doing through the finder. You'll see how the picture is going to come out before you take it. You can zoom in on it through the finder, even in broad daylight, and see everything. However, the Z50 doesn't focus that quickly. Ultimately, if you're on a tripod or shooting things that don't move, the picture quality will be identical. It's just a question of how easy it is to get that picture. Robbie Keane asks, at the 4.48 p.m. here, New York City time, he bought a second DA-10. Did I screw up? Should I have jumped to DA-50? No, not at all. The difference is the D850 is the same thing, same thing as the D800, D800E. The difference is the D850 is simply more refined. It's quieter when the shutter goes off. It does a few things a little better. If you shoot every day, all day, by all means, go to the D850. You'll get your money out of it. But if you're a weekend shooter, if you don't really care how finely the shutter sounds and the money is more important to you, by all means, you did the right thing by getting a second D810. Look at kenrockwell.com and Search out my article, Is It Worth It?, where I cover that because everyone is in a different situation. It's really a question of balancing how much money you have versus how important to you whatever the camera does. But ultimately, the pictures look the same. Dan Jose, 313, asked me. He, also, he says, I often say that I compose so the picture comes out of the camera without using Photoshop. Well, that's not a question of composition. That's a question of colors um, because I always crop my images to be exactly the right shape later. And do that. Often see the real picture first and then Photoshop later and crop. That's all good. This is an artistic synthesis process. However works for you is the way to do it. Honestly, because I have lots of stuff to do, I just want to get the technical side taken care of as quickly as possible. The thing about art is the image is already in my imagination. It's a question of how quickly can I render that image into a tangible form. And the quicker the camera lets me get there, I like the camera better. Harry Bilbab asks, he has some old lenses like the Tamron 2880. As for what's my opinion on it? Oh gosh, I would get rid of those. The opinion of those are those are uh, those are dumpster lenses. I, I, gee, I don't mean to sound that way, but they were cheap when they came out, and today the technology is so old that they're going to not be very good. I don't know what other cameras it will focus on, and especially 28 to 80 was uh, that's a full frame lens. Um, the question is, what camera would you use it on? The lenses today are so much better than anything that's come out from 10 years ago or or before and be more appropriate to use, say, on a mirrorless camera, I would tend to pass on those lenses. Uh, that was the answer you to get. Um, Matt Livingston asks, where's the best trends in photography right now? You know, it's, all the trends are good. The bad trends, when things go out of fashion, like, you know, Kodachrome in 120 size, nobody bought it, so they discontinued it. That's good. When one door closes, another door opens up. I think what's great is everyone can do photography. iPhones, Everybody, my kids have been doing iPhone photography forever. My little daughter's fourth grade class had a great photography teacher that taught people what was important in an image, sent the kids out to the garden, they used their little iPads to make photographs, made better photos than the grown-ups when I have to get a contest. So that's it. I think photography, the fact that people can share stuff and more people can see it, yes, it makes any individual image 
is worth a lot less. On the other hand, everybody can do it. I think that's great. Opinions on shooting film in 2019. Uh, asks Paul Kong. My opinion is 35 millimeter and smaller are now just for hobbyists because simply a 24 megapixel camera gives me better looking image technically than anything on 35 millimeter. So people enjoy it. They shoot it because they enjoy the process. They're not so much concerned about the final image. Uh, as an art form, if the image you get on film, if the image you want, stay with it. But today, few people actually finish on film, i.e. projecting slides in a projector, or actually print optically onto a print to put on the wall. It's usually there's a computer in the process someplace. And once you have to go through a computer, you have to digitize it. Technically, shooting it on a digital camera is going to get you want what you want faster and better. For film, I love shooting my Hasselblad at two and a quarter. I still get superior results. I get about 5,500 by 5,500 pixels off of my, uh, my local photo lab that scans it for me. So I'd say if you're going to shoot film, go Hasselblad or go four by five. I'm not sure if that asks, answers your question. News in Action asks, and I'm running about four minutes behind here. Why are cameras going over the top in pixels? Why? It's all marketing. It doesn't matter. It's simply to give you folks another reason to have to pay more of your good hard-end money and send it off to Japan and China instead of keeping it. Well, you know, you guys from all over the world. But it's just a way to take more people. You don't need it. It's just the way. And honestly, I've shot the camera. It's the same as the older models. Um, what impresses me the most is when they add something that I need, which I think all the cameras have today. So that's the answer. It's marketing. Do I spend more time in New York than CA? You know, I don't even know. I spend all the time over the place. Kevin asks, love you, Ken. Gee, I'm sorry. Kevin Escobar says, I'm talking too fast. Well, you guys are asking too many questions too fast. Thank you for slowing me down. Tony Whitmarsh asks, when am I going to bring out the Nikon 24 mil? Ah, that's an excellent question. I have already shot, well, the 24 millimeter for 1.8S. I believe it's on my website. I believe it's complete on my website. In fact, I think it is. Can I check that? No, because you people... You people have my phone working here to do this live broadcast. I already shot the review for YouTube. I just haven't had the chance to edit it because all this other stuff got me more excited. And just honestly, the childish thought of just going live here and having all you folks ask me questions is more fun than actually sitting there editing my 24 1.8 review. The answer is, look at the 85 1.8 review. It's the same thing. It's just a different focal length. The optics are superb. It's the lens to get if you're shooting a full frame. Nikon Z. And there's really no mystery made in China. It's plasticky, but the optics are incredible. And that's been the way the world has gone. James Valentine says, hi, from the UK. Paul Kong is great. Pop up a darkroom setup. Reliable labs are few and far apart. Luckily, I'm lucky enough to have labs that are close. And honestly, when I shoot, uh-oh, when I shoot film, my lab scans it at very high resolution, and I could even throw the film away almost, but uh, it's fun. Sonny Crackbeats asks, from five minutes ago. Love my site, even though I'm an Olympus shooter. I love Olympus. Micro Four Thirds, same thing as Panasonic. I just haven't had the time to get into it. I think I reviewed one Olympus Micro Four Thirds. I just haven't had the time. Thank you very much. How reliable have Apple been throughout the years? Have I broken my Apple iPads or Macs? Honestly, the Apple stuff is flawless. My original, well, let's see, the first Macintosh I bought was a dual G4. I forgot what it was. G Dual G4, 450 megahertz back in the year 2000. I sold that when I got the next Power Mac. I still have both of those Power Macs. They still work. I bought my first Apple laptop, my iBook 12-inch G4 in 2004. Still works perfectly. I still use In fact, sitting here on my desk is my 2009 MacBook Pro, which I use for recording the audio for my YouTube videos. It works flawlessly iPhones and iPads all work great. The only problem I've had with the iPhones is, is when I use them as security cameras and leave them plugged into a charger 24-7, that it's not good for the battery to stay charged at 100%, and I've had to replace a couple of batteries. Other than that, um, I'm still using the original batteries from my 2004 iBook G4 12-inch. I'm still on the original battery on my MacBook Pro from 2009. As an engineer, I know how to make batteries last long, which is basically uh, how you charge them or not. Uh, they don't like to be kept at 100% all the time. Let them run down. Anyway, yes, Apple stuff is awesome. Yes, it costs more because it's better. Robbie Keenes, thank you for my website. Massive archive of info. It's available. Yes, thank you very much. Harry says, great advice. Oh, you are too kind. Helga asks, how much resolution over 24 matter? It doesn't matter at all. See my article at kenrockwell.com called a Pixel Dumping, and you'll discover there's no way to see more than about 8, meg yeah, eight megapixels at once. It's all a waste. It all gets re thrown away. Where do I get my film processed? I mail my stuff to North Coast Photo. If I remember correctly, it's on my website. Go to Links, go to Photo Labs. They're in Carlsbad by San Diego, California. Uh, they get stuff in from all over the world every day. And although I haven't used them for about a year, I just sent them a Christmas card. And they mail stuff out the next day to all over the world every day. 
Uh, they do great. They do scans. Um, I would say use them if you can mail stuff to the United States. Uh, I think it's North Coast, uh, northcoastphoto.com. Chichiro, can I recommend the budget lens for my D5200 for landscapes and don't mind manual focus? You know, you don't need manual focus. I love the 35 millimeter f 1.8. It's a great lens. It's only about, gee, I think it's down to about $160 brand new. Or use one of the kit lenses, the 18 to 55 lenses, the lens of your choice. Those are great lenses. I love my Fuji X-T30. Dominic, Dominic Putin asks, which lens should I buy? Kit lens? You know, the 18 to 55 kit lens is a great f2.8 f4 lens for the X-T30. The next lens would be a longer lens. And, you know, I, gee, I forget offhand what you should get, but uh, for filming, well, I'm not sure what that means. I'd say stick with the kit lens and get one of the longer lenses. Christmas greetings. Thank you from Denmark. I love Christmas. We didn't get any butter cookies this year. Uh-oh. I hope they were brought over. Mario Andre asks, related to film, which Hasselblad do I recommend? Take a look at my website, kenrockwell.com. Look at my link to my Hasselblad page where I cover uh, what I recommend. And again, for those of you who are just joining us here, this is a live broadcast from Ken Rockwell of kenrockwell.com and kenrockwell.tv. Uh, if you put your questions to me in the comments section, I'm reading them about three or four minutes behind, but I'm trying to answer all of them. Uh, I use a 503CX. The key with Hasselblad is you want to get probably the oldest camera that has the bright screen because the original ground glass screens were horrible to focus through. The, the bright screens, which came out about the era of the 503CX, makes it much better. Yeah, get a Hasselblad. But again, go to KenRockwell.com. Oh, KenRockwell.com slash Hasselblad. All lowercase. We'll get that. From France. Okay. Don, Dan Jose, reading my website for years. Best thing in Hawaii Portugal is, isn't it? Thank you for that. Thank you for reading. I'm trying to scoot through here. I don't mean to be rude, but I, I'm trying to catch up. Can a 45 megabit camera has a sharpness of plus X film, but Pentatomic X, like, look. Well, you know, it's resolution. It, the question is, you look at modulation transfer film functions of film versus video or film versus digital. The problem is film has a very slow roll off. And so while you can see it 200 line pairs per millimeter, it's a very, 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 very low modulation as opposed to a digital camera that's pretty much at 100% modulation until you get to uh, what uh, one over X or half, one over two X or whatever is to get to the Nyquist cutoff where it falls off completely. Um, they give very different looks. And that's the thing. It's all a question of what, what different... Uh, film and digital, the real question is, which do you like? What look you prefer? Technically, <laughs> the thing is, digital is so much quieter with a grain. Merry Christmas. Happy Hanukkah from Israel. Thank you. Toto Rabbah, as they say in, uh, in Hebrew. Okay. When I do a photography seminar, yes, look at KenRockwell.com. Click my workshops link, which which I think is on every page. Uh, I should be in Yosemite in May. We're also looking to do something in probably Death Valley or maybe California's uh, South Central Coast for springtime. We just haven't thought that far yet because we're trying to survive through Christmas. Suitable tripod for Z50. Uh, you don't need a tripod. Do I find any for self-video? For little ones, a little short tabletop tripod I like is the Oban CTT-1000, which I reviewed on my website. I think it's about a hundred and change dollars. It's a tiny little thing that folds up to be about six inches long and it goes about a foot and a half high. Okay, folks are saying hi. Oh, South Africa, lecker. I love you guys in South Africa. Good morning from South Africa. Warm South African smiles there. Okay, hello, Vietnam at 5 a.m. Okay, oh my gosh, from Vietnam. You guys are worldwide, thank you. Well, it's 5.02 p.m. here in New York City. Using a 5 or 3X Hasselblad. What TTL flash? Oh my gosh, I don't know that I, I don't use flash on Hasselblad, so I can't help with that. Feedback about photography. It was figure right there, thank you. Oh, I'm current. Am I? <sighs> okay, we've gone about an hour now. Tell you what, uh, Nick Matthews, I only discovered my YouTube channel tonight, UK, to hear my voice of reading your website for years is great. Any plans on coming to the UK? No plans, but you never know. See, I've got 100 people watching. What would you guys like me to talk about or show, or should I sign off, go get something to drink <laughs> after all this talking, and get back to making a studio video of how to adopt any lens to the Nikon Z series of cameras. Latvia. Gosh, I know people from Latvia. They live in San Francisco now. Okay, tell you what, this has been fun. I think I should sign off. Does anybody else have any more questions? Have a beer. Thank you, Nick. Thank you guys very much for watching. Again, this started off as an unboxing of a mystery product. And just for kicks, just to sum up, it was just awesome, made in China or possibly Hong Kong, two times double macro lens. 
Do I like Mamita for medium format? I do, but back in the day, Mamita for medium format, everybody always wanted the Hasselblad. Every professional wanted the Hasselblad. It's what Ansel Adams shot. It's always been the camera to which professionals aspired ever since the dawn of photography. Well, no, ever since about the 1950s when Ansel Adams started using it when it first started coming out. It's what even Leica people dream of, which they could afford, but Hasselblads used to cost three times what a Leica cost. So Mamiya's were never made that well. They tended, the only camera I've ever had out in the field that actually fell apart on me and I had to bring a screwdriver to fix it when I was in Guatemala of all places. Mamiya's I love for film. If you want a portable rangefinder camera, the six and seven Mamiya's are fantastic for that. If I'm gonna be on a tripod, then I want my Hasselblad so I can see exactly what I'm shooting. Carlos Oliveira asks, which prime lens do I recommend? I don't recommend a prime lens for the Nikon Z50. You don't have, that's the two kit lenses. I don't recommend anything. Something that time has taught me. When I first started this, I got my, I was shooting long before this, but in 1973, I bought my first single lens reflex camera. And that was in November. For Christmas, I had Santa Claus bring me a 200 millimeter lens. And I never stopped buying lenses from fisheye to 700 millimeters when I was a little kid. Only with experience did I realize if I had just shot the 50, yeah, it was a 53 millimeter lens that Minolta Cameron came with, I would be a much better photographer. So the recommending, my recommendation for a lens for your Z50 is that you already have it. Any recommendations for APS-C? You know, Pinky not having a grip for APS-C recommendations, since you already have Canon, I would say look at the new Canon APS-C mirrorless cameras, the EOS M series. Canon is a, my favorite camera company. I have not looked at their mirrorless cameras for about two years now. Their original ones were a little bit slow to focus, but the pictures were first class. I would say look at the EOS M on M7 they're up to now. I'd say go look at Canon. Luciano asks, any comments about how Nikon is doing at a company? I haven't read anything. Bad they are going, you know, I don't know. They're a huge corporation. They're not going to go away. The question is, will they change? I don't think they'll ever discontinue cameras. Remember, Kodak still makes film, for crying out loud. They don't make a lot, but they still make film. And nobody buys it because we all buy Fuji. We've been buying Fuji since the 90s. So I wouldn't worry about that. Lots of questions, Donald asks. But if answered a bunch of mine, never even asked. Please make videos of flash use versus hot shoe. Built-in versus hot shoe, the only difference between built-in and hot shoe flash is that the built-in flash isn't quite as bright and usually takes longer to recycle. So if you're shooting at a close distance, it doesn't matter. If you're shooting a long distance, it doesn't matter unless you don't have enough power. And if you need to shoot at faster frame rates, it would matter more to use an external flash. News in Action asks, what do I think of the Nikon AF Nikkor ED200, excuse, 80 to 200 f2.8D? I think it's the best buy in photography. The only problem is now Nikon has left it behind and it won't autofocus with the FTZ adapter. S chat says thanks. Still have my M3. Oh yeah, have that thing in the vault or what do you call it, the safe? Love my Leica M3. The Leica M3 is the best 35 millimeter camera ever made for use today. Who are my favorite photographers? You know, I really like the work of Ansel Adams, Sebastião Salgado. His work really is is, is uh, interesting. Um, just to move on here, do I ever use crop modes in 5 DSR? Yes, I use the crop modes in my 5 DSR Canon all the time. Oftentimes to square. I have a program to the little mother function button right by the shutter so I can change crop modes all the time. See, Byron buys Kodak film. That's what keeps the lights on. Hello. Oh, hello. Why don't I? Oh, uh, Akim asked me, why don't I like the Nikon Z series? Well, I have a whole review of that in my YouTube review of the Nikon Z6 and Z7. Talks about what ticks me off about the Nikon Z6 and Z7. But I love the little Z50. It's all ergonomics. Technically, the pictures look great, but as someone who has to shoot every day and produce, there's too many things that bug me, like the fact that this dial's on the wrong side, the fact that these memory settings don't remember everything I need and I have to go into more settings to change it. That's why I don't like my Z7. Okay. Is it time for me to head out? You know, I have 104 people watching. I'm taking live questions here by the comments section. I'm Ken Rockwell with KenRockwell.com and KenRockwell.tv. And if I don't have any more comments, I think I will sign off. Oh, here we go. Another question from Danny Jones. Thank you. How do the finders compare, Z50 to Z6? You know, for some weird reason, I prefer the Z50 finder. I don't know why that is. Maybe because I'm just more relaxed when I shoot the Z50. I would say look at my reviews where I actually list the uh, apparent angles, which are how big they appear to be. But other than that, it's the same. The technical quality, the biggest limitation in these finders today is these dinky little optics. Now, if you look at a pair of big binoculars, you see the big eyepieces on that, or a professional uh, medical microscope, there's big eyepieces. These digital cameras use dinky little optics because, you know, they're small cameras. They couldn't put a giant eyepiece on there. And because the eyepiece is limited size, and because the optics and precision that are involved with this little adjuster here, 
That's what makes them less soft, and I often find that they have astigmatism. The questions on YouTube streams never stop. I know. Let's head out what I need. You don't really need to. Best bargain used? Well, gee, when you say used bargain, it could be anything. Um, so all the questions, the question all this is, what do you need used? Oh, Yon. Hello, Bob Best. Would I say a good upgrade to D3? Please great image. I still use my D3 every day. There is no upgrade to a D3. The only thing my D3 doesn't have is a sensor cleaner built in, which drives me crazy because I use it in my studio shooting at F22. Um, the only upgrade really would be a D4 or D5. The problem with those cameras for me is, is they, well, that's a good point. The D4 and D5 lose the autofocus lever controls on the back, but that's it. The choice is D4, D5, or Mark versions of those, and there's a D6 coming. They are designed to do more video, which is why they change some of the controls on the back, but I use it in the studio. Martin here, sensor noise in the Z50, really full frames and low light. Well, gee, SME 013 Gmail asks me, is the sensor noise on this? I would say go to kenrockwell.com, go to my camera reviews where I have the full frame, excuse me, the full camera original files from all sorts of cameras available that you can download and analyze to your heart's content. And you can compare full frame versus the FX, full frame versus the DX camera. The important thing is, is most people aren't looking at microscopes to your pictures. You're looking at normal sizes. And at normal sizes, I don't think it matters anymore. The thing is, most people don't realize, when I shoot low light, I use ISO 6400, will let me shoot handheld in moonlight at f1.4, at about a quarter of a second. I don't need the crazy high ISO some people do. Although you do start to need them if you're shooting, say, an f5.6 zoom in the dark, then maybe I'll shoot at ISO 51,000, where I have some uh, samples of my Fuji Film XE3 review. But the thing is, if I was going to do that a lot, I wouldn't be shooting at ISO 50,000. I'd buy a real man's lens, like an f2 or f2.8, telephoto, and I'd be able to shoot more reasonable things. New cheap alternative to Epson RD1. I forget the RD1. I don't even remember what that was. That, I think, was a Leica mount APS-C. Hey, Nick Matthews, can, can do you do YouTube the way forward from your website? I'm not sure what that means. Video about Nikon like Gee, Gino Photo. That's exactly what I've been trying to do. I have every Nikon lens ever made here from the rangefinder lenses, and here's an AIP lens, which I was going to show how to do on the Nikon Z, but you guys are asking me questions. Roman says yes. Okay. Do I think the Nikon D700 is worth buying to get into full frame? Uh, yeah, the D700 is a camera I always liked, and I was really sad I got rid of mine because I haven't really liked any other ones. It's a great camera. The Z7, excuse me, the D700 is the newer consumer version of the Nikon D3 with the same sensor. I forget, I don't think it has a sensor cleaner on there but it has some economic nice things. I really do love my D3, though, because I love the way the focus area is displayed in the finder, which is in uh, red LEDs as opposed to uh, LCDs that block the image. And the D700 is certainly smaller. So the D700 is still a good camera and probably it's pretty reasonably priced. Okay. Well, you know, considering I had a question saying, hey, Ken, how about this adapt the lenses to the Z camera? I want to go do that video. So I'm going to sign off now. I'm sorry that I lost 100, I have 100 viewers here. The question is, if anybody can let me know how to give you guys advance notice on when I'm doing the next one. Uh, I started this video because FedEx just happened to drop off a mystery package, and I figured, what the heck, I'd let you all share the joy of opening it. But I don't know how to do an advanced thing saying, hey, you know, coming soon in 30 minutes or even, say, the next day. But then I have so many viewers that I wouldn't be able to apply or reply to all your things. Again, punchy here. Any exotic place? Yes, the whole world. When I take pictures, I'm just looking for shapes and colors. Even if it's even if it's Greenland in winter time and it's all gray, I can always find things. That, uh, I don't really even need to go to an exotic place. You know, an interesting exercise is to go into your bathroom and shoot a well. In the old days, we shoot a whole roll of film, and you'll discover it's tough at first. But then you start getting started, and you're like, oh, I need more pictures. Okay, lecker. Ah, oh, I love that word. My friends from South Africa taught me that. More of your videos. Okay, more of my videos means I have to sign, start a Facebook page. You know, Shang, I have a Facebook page. It's, uh, geez, at facebook.com slash Ken Rockwell. I don't know, but search for Ken Rockwell on Facebook. I'm definitely there. I don't use Facebook that much, especially since you folks have been so incredibly responsive here. For instance, just being on the air here for an hour, I got 40 likes, whatever, and 97 people are you watching live here. This shows me. Facebook, I don't get any response. I, in fact, nobody sees it there either, so I'm trying to ignore Facebook. Roman says he shoots mostly film. Go to digital D810. Always searching for a fun digital camera. Sigma DP1 is quite a fun thing. Yeah, film is fun. Okay. Ah, you know, someday I could do a live broadcast about shooting film or film cameras. I could do anything. Uh, the real question is, what is the best use of my 
KS Photo, thank you. What is the best use of my time? In any case, I think I will try to sign off now. I thank you folks very much for watching. Again, Ken Rockwell and KenRockwell.tv. Always got more videos. I have videos to edit. And the problem is I start doing this screwy stuff like hiding off in the corner and <laughs> doing a live broadcast for the hell of it. Thank you for the stream. You are welcome. Thanks for watching. This would not be worthwhile if it wasn't for all you wonderful people watching these videos. And what should I say? This has been Ken Rockwell with KenRockwell.com and KenRockwell.tv. Thank you very much for watching this live broadcast. Oh, thanks for coming out my hands. <laughs> Maybe I should actually look, look at them carefully before I shoot my next video. Thank you much. Oh, you guys are saying thank you. Happy Hanukkah. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> See ya. See you too, Wayne. Thank you very much for watching. You're welcome, Matt. Thank you for watching. News in action. Thank you for watching. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you too. Thank you so much. Okay, and that's it. That's been a live broadcast from Ken Rockwell of KenRockwell.com. Thanks for watching.